In the fourth part of our series on zombie companies, we focus on Singapore today. The small and open economy suffered its worst ever quarterly GDP contraction between April and June, during which it slipped into a recession. With the government setting aside about 73 billion US dollars to help individuals and businesses, will we see zombie companies creeping out of the woodwork? Well, Singapore isn't alone. Governments globally have spent trillions of dollars to help shore up their pandemic-battered economies. But with record low interest rates and markets flushed with liquidity, there are concerns about the rising ranks of zombie companies. In fact, Singapore's Prime Minister did say the government will not support unfeasible firms. During the swearing-in of the new cabinet, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong said we cannot afford to prop up failing industries indefinitely or trap workers in jobs that are no longer viable. So how has the Singapore government been helping businesses? A key tool is the job support scheme, where the government subsidizes part of Singaporean workers' salary, giving companies a rental waiver of four months with the government and landlords sharing the costs equally. Businesses can also apply for rental relief and the government is dispersing traineeship grants. The Job Support Scheme, or JSS, was supposed to end this month. But earlier this week, Singapore Deputy Prime Minister Heng Swee Keat says it will be extended up to March next year. This amid a downbeat official forecast that this year's contraction will wipe out the past three years of growth. Now, the number of zombie companies is unlikely to be high in Singapore, though there are no statistics available, according to experts our colleagues at Today spoke to. Still, government numbers show that about 26,500 companies seized operations in the first seven months of this year. And that is actually slightly down from 28,000 a year ago. And this is somewhat curious, given that Singapore is going through its worst economic performance since independence. So is this a sign of zombie companies lurking behind the scenes? Well, let's bring in Swan Tik Kin. He's head of research, head executive of director, global economics and markets research, UOB. Tik Kin, so I wonder, does it come as a surprise to you that the number of companies that have folded in the country so far lower than what we saw last year, given that the economy is going through its worst contraction since independence? Right. Uh, good morning. Um, well, uh, the numbers are, the number is uh, smaller. I think this year so far, uh, I think because there's a lagged effect, one thing, there's a lagged effect from uh, uh, this uh, economic uh, contraction and the impact on the businesses. And the other thing, of course, uh, uh, we talked about that earlier about uh, government support. And then this, some of this uh, support allows, I think, uh, gov uh, companies, I think, to, um, to kind of postpone or to take a wait and see attitude, uh, at, uh, uh, posture to see what, uh, what is ahead of, these, uh, of the business environment. So that will take time for the numbers to show up. Uh, but of course, the numbers are being delayed uh, somewhat by uh, government uh, support schemes as well. Right. Does that mean that we won't actually feel or experience or witness the full impact of the issue of zombie companies until these government stimulus measures actually run out? And if so, what are some of the yardsticks to measure the severity of the issue? Right. Uh, for this, um, for, for the bankruptcy, there are two things here. One is the bankruptcies or company closing down. Uh, that will take some time to, to, to show up for the numbers. And once the grant runs out, once the support schemes run out, and some of the companies find that it is not viable to continue, so that would happen. Then second thing is uh, for the zombie companies um, that the, the program is talking about. For the zombie companies, that will take some time. Uh, and it, it will show. Uh, it will continue to thrive or to to hang on there, uh, because of the government support, or because of the credit support, right? So these zombie companies will take a while to to to, to be there, and uh, to for that for, it, it, will, it could take years. And some of the yardsticks, um, some of the yardsticks will be uh, profitability that we should be looking at, and also job creation as well for the company and for the uh, for the industries. Hmm. What are some of the knock-on effects that we should be aware of for the issue of zombie companies, for the business landscape, the economy, and jobs? Right. For, uh, for, I think because Singapore is a very open economy, it's actually quite competitive. If you look at, um, uh, compared to other uh, economies and other countries, and also one's, one of the most important things is, is the political pressure that is uh, largely uh, absent in Singapore, but 
present very uh, heavily in other countries that allow these uh, zombie companies to, to be around. So uh, the impact for the business, for the economy, for the industry it is very apparent. One thing is that the productivity is low. So you have those uh, low growth economies, uh, part of sectors. A uh, part of the reason is because of the presence of a uh, large number of uh, zombie companies. And also, I think the skill level of the workers, not just in the industry, but overall in the, in, uh, in the economy, tend to be lower. There's a, there's a tendency to have a quite a low skill uh, economy. So that, uh, that, that is a negative um, a spiral. That's a downward spiral that company or economies go through if they have a presence of large number of uh, zombie companies. Right. So would you say that in Singapore where there's a relative ease of you know, setting up and shutting down businesses and the government's prudence in doling out assistance, that actually helps to you know, reduce the risk of seeding uh, zombie companies? Right, yeah, I think you are right. Uh, on, uh, in Singapore's uh, context, uh, it's quite competitive. It's easy to open, easy to close, and also the lack of uh, political interference. That's very important. I think we all have to uh, appreciate in Singapore's context, it is uh, politically stable, and yet uh, the political interference is very low in terms of uh, running businesses. Unlike other countries, uh, the presence of zombie companies because of the lack of political will to wind down these companies or to close down the industries or, or that sort of a hard decisions. In Singapore, there's lack of that. So the presence of zombie companies, I think the chances of that are quite low compared to other uh, places that we, we are quite familiar with. Right. That said, though, given the open nature of Singapore's economy, you know, how we are export-reliant as well, does that pose some sort of risk? Are there certain sectors that are more vulnerable to this issue? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's always risk uh, of this um, uh, coming in. Uh, one of the things that we need to be aware of is that I think the workers, especially you know, people like you and I, and we, we need to really constantly upgrade our skills uh, rather than uh, hanging on to, let's say, if the industry is not working out or the sector is not really working out in this uh, new normal environment that uh, Minister Chan Chun Singh talked about, the new economy, the new type of business is not working out. I think we have to really, I think the government has the will and we have to really move away from that and go to some uh, places or sectors that have a chance to survive in the new economy or the new uh, post-pandemic uh, world. How do you... Or how does the government kind of ensure that you know it's providing the necessary support for businesses that really need it? I mean, it's a very fine balancing act here, right? Providing the support on one hand, and at the same time making sure that when you know the clock runs out, it's not pulling the rug from under the feet of these companies. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, it's a fine balance. How much support do we give? Uh, until what uh, uh, what stage that we have to withdraw the support? And certain sectors, I think we have to be uh, cognizant of the fact that some of the companies before pandemic, some have been doing very well, right? Uh, the structure is well, uh, the company is uh, properly structured and uh, productive. Uh, some companies are already, were already struggling before the pandemic. And then now with the pandemic, uh, government support comes in um, more, more or less um, one size fits all. Uh, but that would take some time for it to, the government has to decide when to pull the, pull the plug. And also at the same time, what are the what are the support? What else can the government do, and what else can we do as uh, individuals? The government has been providing a lot of uh, these uh, facilities and uh, programs, packages, schemes to train the workers to provide uh, support for companies. And the direction is correct. The direction is correct. You know, more online big data analysis, uh, e-commerce, and things like that. So uh, companies themselves and workers as well, employees like us. We have to uh, really constantly upgrade uh, to make ourselves more uh, competitive because the support one day is going to stop. I think because in Singapore's context, even more so because our resources are really, really limited and that's uh, the results are all that we have basically. Mm. Tekin, thank you so much for sharing your time and your analysis with us. Swan Tekin, Head of Research, Executive Director, Global Economics and Markets Research at UOB.